We're entering the battle of the minis right now. I have the Miu A30 in the post. I have this RG28XX here with a great na name. We have the older ones, which we used to call these minis, but now are they mini? I don't know. The GKD Pixel enters the market where we not only have a battle for mini devices arising, but we also have a battle for premium devices arising. Maybe you've been at this retro gaming journey for a while, or maybe you've just watched a bunch of videos and you're like, Aiden, just tell me what to buy. Whomever you are in this race of retro emulation handhelds, you're gonna know that there's a lot of choice out there, but there's also a lot of junk out there. I mean, I enjoy Power Kitty, but a lot of their devices are pretty damn janky as far as hardware is concerned. And you know, Anbenik make good hardware, but every single device of theirs rattles. It's nuts. Okay, maybe there's one. <laughs> That's their premium device, Anbenik. Just stop making rattly buttons. So when something like the RG Nano or the Retroid Pocket 2S or the GKD Mini comes along, it's so refreshing. So today we're gonna to answer two questions along with about 69 other questions. One, is the GKD Pixel big slash small enough to be playable? Two, is it premium enough? And three, is the price right? That's what? two questions, you idiot. But before we talk about that, let's talk about something very important. PCB where we're like, hey Aiden, why don't you focus on our CNC services this week? So I was like, cold nuclear compounds? And they were like, no, CNC for manufacturing. So I said, <laughs> chopping nuts carefully. To which they stopped responding, so I'm pretty sure they're happy with anything. And on an unrelated note, they have the section on their website where you can drag 3D files and have them create something with computer numerical control, whatever that is. What's great is that you can tweak everything right here on the site and reach out to them if you're struggling with anything. But again, I don't know what CNC is and I don't know where you can get it done. So we're gonna talk about everything in reverse. We're gonna start with price. So on Go Game Geek, by the way, thank you very much Go Game Geek for sending pretty much all these devices to me, uh, these two and a few of the others. And on their website, it's $89. They include shipping wherever you are in the world, shipping is included into the price, so that's quite nice. <laughs> that is not cheap. That's 1,600 Rand here in South Africa. The RG28XX is 69.99 on the Go Game Geek websites. The Miu Mini A30, which I have in the post, is 59.99. The Miu Mini is 89.99 and the RG280V, just for shits and giggles, is $78. So that's interesting because it's older and still pretty damn good. I really like it. There are a lot of things at play here, but if you want a premium mini device, the GKD Pixel is it. Um, I mean, you've got the RG Nano, but that is a nano device. That is a keychain device. It's a whole different segment. This is it. For nostalgia, I would say the Anbenik RG280V is still in the running for that. The MiU A30 is definitely in the running for nostalgia, or you could go for the mini baby rattle. I mean, I joke, but the only truly sort of this new mini segment devices that are out there um, is the RG28V, the RG28XX, the MiU A30 in the post. If you can think of another one, let me know. But that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. Is it premium enough? In short, no, it isn't. And the reason I say that is the following. I mean, the packaging is quite premium. Like, um, I mean, premium as in they've got a really cool little design, their game kitty, pixel, open, pixel, pixel box. Then it's got a, you know, the cheap and nasty plastic that it came in. Uh, this is just a normal plastic covering that they use in all these manufacturing things. And then a really, really nicely designed uh, booklet as TechDweeb calls it, the word paper. Funny enough, very funny, hilarious actually, is the fact that this, there's a few spelling mistakes, but this booklet is useful. All the little things that I usually put in these videos of how to get going and navigate, it's all in the manual. It's all there and it's all pretty useful. But we'll get into that because even though it tells you how to use the operating system, it doesn't mean you should. <laughs> um, it has no Wi-Fi. Now, I don't think this is a huge deal. It's a premium device, so maybe it should have Wi-Fi for album art scraping and all that, but I am gonna highly recommend 
MinUI, which doesn't need Wi-Fi, but as it stands, it really could have done with some album, album art scraping. It has no Bluetooth, it can't handle Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth controllers, and that's a missed opportunity because this is a perfect retro music device. Like, I have said this before, if a dev can develop a nice user interface for the Linux music player, all these little devices would be so cool for audio. Um, yes. And the user interface is a bit of a disaster, to be honest. The B is sometimes the back button, but then sometimes start is the back button, sometimes select is the back button. It's, it's a mess. There are spelling mistakes in the operating system. RetroArch and standalone emulators, emulators have been separated. That's not such a big deal. But then I couldn't find Game Boy Advance in the RetroArch emulators, but I could find it in the standalone emulators. It's just an old operating system and it needs work. And it's at this point of the video that I usually give you my little tips on, you know, press this to do this and do that to that and volume and brightness and all that. Um, but, and it did, like I said, it is in the manual, but also I think you should use MinUI. Russ from Retro Game Core has tweaked MinUI to be optimized for this. <sighs> anyway, and then there's this. It's not bad, it's not Anbinic bad, but it is, you know, it's heading into premium territory and uh, it's just not acceptable. It's not terrible, I'm not gonna hop on about it like I am right now. Anyway, moving on. It has a lanyard uh, hole. <laughs> this battery indicator stays on and that I think is not good. It would have been nice if, you know, it's, if you press maybe the power button once and then it shows the battery, but this stays on, so in a darkly lit room, this becomes a very bright green light in the room. So uh, as much as I like it, it looks cool, it needs to be refined. All the buttons feel very nice. I have to admit that. When I first got it, uh, the D-pad is a rubber membrane, the action buttons are rubber membranes, but there's a mechanical click to them, listen. You hear that like little, clickiness to it. And when I first got it, I thought there was maybe even something wrong with them. But the more I use it, the more I like it. It's got a very nice tactile sort of ASMR, it feels good to touch and that's always good. It means you'll be picking this up more often than not. And let's just take a moment to appreciate the design of the shell. The chamfered edges, the LED light indicator thingy, the lovely text that they've put throughout it has been thought out quite well. The dedicated groove for the SD card, Retro Fun Tech quite appreciated that. Got the, the grooves akin to a Game Boy and the sort of industrially exposed screws there, you know, I, there's just, it has an X factor when it comes to the design. So a big well done to Game Kitty for that. And I really feel like the software lets it, the, the level of excellence of the shell is equally let down by the level of shirtiness of <laughs> the software. And audio is not half bad. The screen, I would say for the price, the screen is actually pretty good. It's, it's slightly pixelated. The way you tell that if you watch a lot of reviews of this, um, a lot of the screens have what's called aliasing, where you see the pixels kind of blend into each other. It does have that, so it's not a super high resolution, but the color's fine, and it's just a decent little screen. Like there, that's black, and look how nicely it's rendering black. That's sometimes like a, a dusky gray. So yeah, not a bad screen at all. Now performance, you are gonna get some decent performance of this all the way up to PS1. The performance isn't perfect across the board. You get a bit of audio crackling here and there. I noticed that GBA is only available on the, on the standalone emulator, which means maybe there was a performance issue on the RetroArch emulator. So there's little performance issues here and there, but overall pretty good comp performance all the way up to PS1. Now, Russ from Retro Game Call has tweaked MinUI to work quite well with all systems and he's got some little workarounds for some of the issues. But again, it would be nice to have a dedicated firmware for, for this that has been specifically optimized for this, but we don't have that. And also a note, if you do switch to the MinUI, and I am gonna make a separate video about specifically Russ's tweaked MinUI software, but 
moving to that, you are going to lose some of the cool systems on here like Wonderswan and that that's shipped on the device. So you are going to lose some of the systems. So there are some caveats to using MinUI. And so that's why I said it would just be nice if they had just taken more care with the software for this thing. So to go back to my question on this, is it premium enough? It isn't. So the the this is a tough one because the hardware is premium enough. The hardware definitely lives up to that $89 price tag, but the firmware just does not. And so you have to do a lot of work to get to the point of making it premium enough. And then our first question, is it big slash small enough to be playable? That is up to you. You'll have to actually check out my good old pal Stubbs who has much bigger thumbs than me, my little voting spot, much bigger thumbs than me. I'm not sure what he said about it, whether it was playable for him, but for me, it is playable. For me, this is a great in the queue, waiting for things device. I mean, people said the MiU Mini was too small and then people completely lost their mind over the RG Nano. I mean, Nano is in its name. I don't know what they were expect expecting. And then it's very obviously pocketable. I mean, unless you're wearing yoga pants, which I'm actually, no, just kidding, I'm not wearing yoga pants. If you're looking for a device to gift someone, I want to say the GKD Pixel, but you know, this is a Father's Day gift, a gift for your friend at Christmas, those sorts of things. But you'll have to send it to yourself first, you'll have to set it up for them and then send it to them. You won't be able to send it to them directly because the firmware just isn't good enough. You know, for mass mainstream appeal, I give this device a one out of 10. But as a device that tinkerers like me can give as gifts to family and friends, I give the GKD Pixel a 10. It's $89 on the Go Game website. Ah, oh, it's co the Kobe Blue. <laughs> it's $89 on the Go Game week. 